everyone, and welcome back to part two of the screencast. We are going to be talking about bacteria and disease. So we'll be wrapping up objective number five and starting on objective number six, which is describe the different shapes of bacteria and the characteristics of their cell wall. Quick little note that not all bacteria cause disease. There's actually a lot of good bacteria out there. They play an important role in our ecosystems as decomposers when they break down organic material and help recycle carbon in our atmosphere. So just keep that in mind that not all of them are bad. So in the immune system notes, you learned the term pathogens and that's referring to any agent that causes disease. So viruses fall in this category and bacteria that cause disease are also considered pathogens as well. So there's two ways that they can cause disease. One of them is by producing a toxin or an acid. So an example of this is food poisoning or the 24 hour stomach bug. The bacteria that someone has consumed is releasing a toxin and the immune system's response is to get rid of that bacteria as soon as possible. So a symptom of this is commonly the person will vomit or they may experience cramps or diarrhea. Another example is cavities. So bacteria that live in your mouth are feeding off of the sugar that you eat. And that sugar is broken down and a byproduct that's released is lactic acid. So this lactic acid is actually what's eroding away your tooth enamel and can lead to cavities if you're not brushing your teeth twice a day. The second way that bacteria can cause disease is consuming the host tissue. So an example of this is tuberculosis, where the bacteria are actually eating away at the lung cells, which makes it very difficult to breathe and can be fatal if not treated. So tomorrow you'll actually learn about how to treat these bacterial diseases when you look at antibiotics. All right, we're gonna be looking at three adaptations of bacteria. One thing to keep in mind is they do metabolize for energy to make ATP, and there's two ways that they can do this. One of the ways is some bacteria do require oxygen to survive, and so they use the process aerobic respiration in order to live and produce ATP. So this kind of bacteria is generally living in warm and moist environments, typically in the soil. There's also some bacteria that do not need oxygen to survive. They're using the process of anaerobic respiration, otherwise known as fermentation. And they're gonna be living in extreme environments or inside the body where oxygen is limited. So this could be in like salt lakes, thermal vents, fogs, swamps. And like I said, they also can live inside your body. You are actually home to two to six pounds of gut bacteria. This is good bacteria, not bad. And what this bacteria is doing is serving the purpose of helping you digest your food. So they do help provide minerals and vitamins for our bodies when we cannot do that on our own. Uh, one of the side effects, though, is because they're using fermentation, they release gas, and sometimes it smells. So I'll just leave it at that, and you can leave your imagination and go wild. All right, another adaptation that bacteria have is they have different cell wall shapes. So in order for bacteria to survive, they need moisture, and they want to prevent themselves from drying out. So by having these different shapes in their cell wall, it allows them to survive. So there's three that you need to know. So if you wanna go ahead and pause and sketch these three different kind of bacteria, and then we'll label them together. This first bacteria over here kind of looks like Tic Tacs. They're round, rod-shaped, and these are called bacillus. The second bacteria are circular, they look like little spheres. These are called coccus. And the third bacteria basically look like little spirals or curlicues, and these are called spirillum. 
One cool thing about these three terms is bacteria are classified based on their shapes, and you can actually find these terms in their scientific names. So here's just a wide variety of different bacteria cells. And if you look at their scientific name, so this is an example of anthrax, you can actually see what the shape is based off of the name. So it's bacillus, so it's gonna look like this shape. And the third adaptation we're gonna look at is endospores. So endospores is a specific adaptation that some bacteria have the ability to form. And what it means is that if conditions become unfavorable for the bacteria cell, let's say there's not enough food or there's not enough moisture, the bacteria cell will actually preserve its DNA by forming a thick casing around it. And then that casing is the endospore. And the bacteria cell will remain as an endospore until conditions became favorable again. The hard thing about when it's in this format of an endospore is it's really hard to destroy. They can withstand extreme heat, chemicals, and radiation. So it's really hard to destroy this kind of bacteria. And also if it's inside someone, it's really hard and difficult to treat. If the conditions become favorable again, the bacteria then will, will revert back to its original form. So there's two examples of endospores that we're gonna look at. The first one is anthrax. So anthrax is an example of an endospore that uh, is very fatal. Um, it produces a toxin inside the body if it's inhaled. It has been used in the past as a form of biological warfare right after the September 11th attacks in 2001. Anthrax was actually placed in envelopes and sent to two senators and a couple of media outlets. And anyone that inhales anthrax, it goes into the lungs and it basically produces a toxin. And if it's not treated within like 24 to 48 hours, it can lead to death. The last example we're gonna look at is botulism. So botulism is a bacteria that causes like uh, paralysis of the muscles because it affects the nervous system. And so here you can see this boy has been, been infected with botulism. And you can see that his facial muscles are very relaxed. And that's because botulism basically paralyzes the face. Um, botulism does exist naturally in some raw foods. And one of them is honey in very, very small amounts. So honey is safe to eat, but if you ever notice on the back of a bottle of honey, there's always a warning label that says, do not feed honey to infants under one year of age. And the reason why is because that botulism can actually kill the infant. Their immune systems are not mature enough to handle this toxin that is produced. Also, botulism can be used to treat wrinkles in cosmetic um, purposes. So here you can see this woman has some wrinkles. If you were to inject botulism, it actually relaxes the facial muscles temporarily. The body then fights off that toxin and it does resort back to having wrinkles again. But there's just an example of how endospores are used for cosmetic reasons. So that brings us to the very last part. This is the end of the screencast. I hope you learned something new. Go ahead and finish the remaining questions in your Schoology quiz. Thanks for watching.